you're taking vitamin D, but what if your body isn't absorbing it? Or even worse, what if the calcium that you're counting on is ending up in your arteries instead of in your bones? It's easy to think of vitamin D as just the sunshine vitamin, but did you know that it actually acts like a powerful hormone that tells your bones exactly how to use calcium? Without enough of it, all the calcium that you're taking might be going to waste or worse, building up in your body where it shouldn't be. Today, we're gonna change that. Hello, my friends. I'm Sarah. I'm a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, a BoneFist certified fitness instructor and a 500 hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific for osteoporosis and yoga. I'm on a mission to reduce the number of fractures that happen each year. And I am so pleased to have you join me in the journey to better bone health. If you're focused on getting enough calcium for your bones, but you haven't given much thought to vitamin D, then you're missing a critical piece of the puzzle. In today's video, we'll explore why vitamin D is the nutrient that unlocks calcium's power, how to know if you're low, even without having obvious symptoms, and what to do to make sure that your bones are actually benefiting from the nutrients that you're working so hard to get. So let's start with the big question. Why isn't calcium enough on its own? And what makes vitamin D the real key to getting calcium into your bones where it belongs? So calcium is like the building material for your bones, but just having building materials sitting around doesn't automatically create a strong structure. You need to have a foreman, someone who tells the materials where they need to go and how they're supposed to be used. And that's exactly what vitamin D does. Without enough vitamin D, your body struggles to absorb calcium from your diet or from supplements. In fact, studies show that even if you're taking the recommended amount of calcium, only a fraction of it actually gets absorbed without having sufficient vitamin D. The rest of it, it passes through your system, or worse, it can deposit into your soft tissues like your arteries, contributing to things like calcification and heart disease. So if you're serious about protecting your bones, then vitamin D isn't optional, it's essential. And here's the part that surprises a lot of people. Vitamin D doesn't just help to absorb calcium, it also helps to regulate where the calcium goes, making sure that it's actually building strong and healthy bones instead of ending up in places that can cause harm. How much vitamin D do you actually need to make all of this happen? And is it possible that you're low, even if you're spending time in the sun? Let's talk about that next. The official recommendations for how much vitamin D to consume daily often falls short of what people who are concerned about bone loss actually need. The recommended dietary allowance for most adults is between 600 and 800 international units per day. But research shows that many people, especially older adults, and those that have bone loss may need much more than that to maintain having optimal blood levels. So for optimal functioning, we need to have between 50 and 70 nanograms per milliliter for best support for bone remodeling and for calcium absorption. This is significantly more than the general medical rule of thumb that anything over 30 nanograms per milliliter will do. Statistically speaking, 40% of adults in the Western world are actually deficient in vitamin D meaning that they're below the minimum 30 nanograms per milliliter, which is far away from where they need to be for optimal functioning for bone health. With an understanding of how much vitamin D our bodies need for optimal functioning, then the next question is, where do we personally stand? The only way to really know is with a simple blood test that's called 25-hydroxyvitamin D. This test will tell you exactly how much vitamin D is circulating in your body and whether you're in the optimal range for bone health. So while a blood test is the only way to know for sure, there are some common signs and symptoms that often point to having low levels of vitamin D. If you recognize any of these signs in yourself, then it's worth getting your vitamin D checked out by your doctor. 
So these symptoms include having frequent colds or getting sick often, experiencing muscle weakness or cramps, feeling chronically fatigued or having low energy, even after you get a full night's sleep, bone pain or achiness, especially in the lower back or hips is also another sign. And also mood changes, feeling sad or depressed can be signs of having low vitamin D. Vitamin D deficiency can also show up as unexplained bone loss. So you might be doing everything right, eating well, exercising, and still see your bone density declining. That's why checking your level is so important if you're concerned about osteoporosis or osteopenia. So if any of these symptoms sound familiar, take it as a sign to investigate further. Keep in mind that there are a number of reasons that your vitamin D could be low, even if you're spending time outside. Sunscreen blocks up to 98% of vitamin D production. And as we age, our skin becomes less efficient at converting sunlight into usable vitamin D. Add in cloudy weather, long winters, and possibly working indoors, and it's no wonder that deficiency is so common. So now let's talk about the most effective ways to raise your vitamin D level and to support having stronger bones, starting with sunlight and the right kinds of supplements. So let's start with the most natural way to raise your vitamin D. Good old sunlight. When UVB rays hit your skin, then your body produces vitamin D3. But to actually make enough, you typically need between 15 to 30 minutes of midday sun exposure on your face, your arms, and your legs without any sunscreen. I once heard a physician say that to naturally meet your vitamin D needs, you'd basically have to spend 20 minutes outside completely naked every day. And well, that's a little bit shocking, isn't it? I don't know about you, but I am definitely not starting that habit anytime soon. Plus, even if you wanted to sunbathe, this only works if you live at a latitude where the sun is strong enough year round, which isn't the case in winter or if you live farther north. And let's be honest, most of us don't have the time or the inclination to sunbathe daily. This is why for many people, supplementation becomes not just helpful, but necessary. So when it comes to supplements, look for vitamin D3. That's the form that your body uses most effectively. And here's the key tip that I promised earlier. Take your vitamin D with a meal that contains healthy fat. It's a fat soluble vitamin, which means that it absorbs much better when it's paired with foods like avocado, olive oil, or even a small handful of nuts. In fact, studies show that you can absorb up to 50% more just by combining it with healthy fats. I recommend combining vitamin D with vitamin K2 because vitamin K2 helps vitamin D to help direct the calcium into your bones and to strengthen them and also to steer the calcium away from your soft tissues like arteries where it definitely doesn't belong. But one important note before you rush to add K2 to your routine, vitamin K2 is involved in your body's natural blood clotting process. So if you're taking blood thinners, it's really important to check with your doctor before adding K2. Some medications are perfectly fine with it and others aren't. So always play it safe and double check with either your pharmacist or your doctor. In 2024, the Endocrine Society released new guidelines that emphasize something important. Taking vitamin D daily at a lower dose is now preferred over taking larger doses once or twice a week. This change is based on growing evidence that daily intake leads to having more consistent vitamin D levels that can help potentially reduce risks, especially as we age. So what does that mean for how much you should actually take? So coming back, mentioning again, the current dietary recommendation for adults is 800 international units daily. But what if like me, you were deficient for many years? According to the new guidelines, the upper safe limit for most healthy adults is 4,000 international units per day. Yes, you can find supplements that have much higher doses on the market. But unless you're working closely with a doctor and getting your blood levels checked regularly, 
it's safest to stay within that 4,000 international unit ceiling. So let me share a bit of my own experience. When I was first diagnosed with rheumatoid arthritis, my doctor ran a vitamin D test and discovered that vi my vitamin D level was dangerously low, just a 9.2. So for context, we generally want to see a minimum level of 30, like we talked about earlier in this video. And ideally we wanna be higher between 50 and 70. Under my doctor's guidance, I started taking 2000 international units of vitamin D3 daily. It wasn't a quick fix. It took nearly five years to bring my levels up into the healthy range, but slow and steady made a real difference. And my doctor was able to monitor my progress with regular blood work along the way. So if you're struggling with having low vitamin D, I highly encourage you to find a healthcare provider that you trust someone who will take your concerns seriously, recommend the right dose for your body, and follow up with appropriate lab testing on a regular basis. Vitamin D is powerful, but it's not one size fits all. So let's have a quick recap of what we've covered today. Vitamin D isn't just a nice to have, it's a must have if you're serious about building stronger bones and protecting your long-term bone health. Keep in mind that vitamin D helps your body to properly absorb calcium and to direct it where it needs to go. And without having enough of it, all those efforts to eat well and to supplement could be falling short. If you're experiencing low energy, frequent illness, muscle aches, or unexplained bone loss, then it might be time to check your vitamin D levels. And don't forget that when you do supplement, take it with a healthy fat and consider pairing it with vitamin K2 for maximum benefit if you're not taking a blood thinner. And no, you don't need to join a vitamin D nudist colony to make all of this happen. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with someone that you love and care about because stronger bones mean having a stronger and healthier life. Together, let's spread the word that strong bones make for a vibrant life. And on that note, I look forward to speaking with you soon.